Hey guys, it's Michelle Leith with Unlock Your Possibility. Welcome to another episode of Thirsty Thursday where we um, talk about some of the uh, ways that you can unlock your possibilities in your life and I'm sharing some of the resources that have helped me do that. And we also, you know, have a little something to drink. Now today, I only have tea, okay? I don't drink wine in the daytime all the time. Today it's tea, so you have whatever you like. Um, okay, so the book that I wanna share with you today is one of my favorites. This one is called The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. And I have read this book a couple of times. I'm reading it again because this book describes one of the most pervasive problems that we all have that we don't even know that we have. And I've been experiencing it myself again lately. And so I'm reading the book again just because I get something more out of it every time. Um, I had so many flags in the book that I actually just had to take notes to read to you because otherwise we'd be here all day. Um, so basically this book describes what he calls, the author calls the upper limit problem. And what that is, is we all have like an upper threshold for how much joy, success, love, happiness, abundance we think we are entitled to have. That when, you know, when things are going really well in our lives, um, in one area of our life, multiple areas, whatever it is, we tend to do something to screw it up. Um, because there's this thermostat that we have set that says you're only allowed to be this successful or this happy. And it's something that's programmed, you know, early in childhood, actually, you know, usually before we can even think for ourselves and we don't realize that we're doing this. Um, but that, you know, when something's going really well, we do we manufacture these situations or, you know, or negative feelings or create arguments or, you know, whatever dramas that take away the happy feeling. And so you can't really relish those great times in your life. Um, he talks about some underlying false beliefs that, you know, hold this upper limit problem in place. A couple of them really resonate for me. One of them is feeling fundamentally flawed. This is that feeling that I'm not enough in some way. And that is a big issue for me. It comes up for me all the time. Um, and the other one is like um, crime of outshining. Like that if you shine too brightly, you're going to make other people around you look bad or feel bad. And that, you know, then they will won't want to be around you and you'll end up alone and those kinds of things. So he shed some light on, you know, some of the, the false beliefs that we have that, you know, that are operating under the surface. Um, he also talks about some of the ways that the upper limit problem shows up in our lives. Like, what does that look like? It can look like worrying. It can look like, you know, worrying obsessively about something in some other area of your life to deflect your attention from what you're really wanting to enjoy. Or um, uh, even like getting sick or getting hurt. Like I was just reading on People Magazine about how the American Idol contestant in the finale like lost her voice the night before the show. Like that, that's like self-sabotage. Like she, it's almost something that could have prevented her from performing, which would have saved her from possibly failing, which she didn't, thank God. Um, you know, or creating conflict with other people. Uh, you know, starting an argument with your spouse after you just had a great day at work. Um, it sounds silly, but we do it. And one of the things I thought was so cool in this book, there's a great section in here about arguments and how um, basically an argument is when two people get into a race or competition to see who gets to be the victim. So, so you know, we, we, we basically have something that goes down with someone and you go, oh, okay, you did something wrong to me, now I want you to take the blame. And then we get into this battle of trying to divide the blame between the two of us, which is really impossible to ever resolve. That we both have 100% responsibility, we all have 100% responsibility for our own emotional selves, our, our words, our actions, and everything in any relationship or any dialogue. So I loved that, that it's a race to be the victim. It actually kind of makes um, arguments that I have now seem a little more entertaining. Anyway, so the, you know, the main point of the book besides the upper limit problem is also he talks about this, the zone of genius, which is where we all ultimately want to live, which is where our, our, our talents and our gifts are getting the fullest expression in our lives but that we tend to stay in what he calls our zone of competence or our zone of excellence, which is where, this is where we do things fairly well or maybe really well, but it's safe. And it's, it's safer to stay here too because you know our families and our friends and our, our organizations that we work for, they kind of want us to stay there too because everybody knows what to expect. So it's really taps, helps you tap into learning how to heed that call to your zone of genius, identify what your zone of genius is, and then learn strategies to dissolve the upper limit problem so that you can really start to allow yourself to have more joy and happiness and success and maybe even feel that way all the time. He's, you know, he talks about how that is possible. We think it's not possible, but you know how I'm all about possibilities and, you know, how willing do you want to get to explore what that looks like? So I highly recommend that you go out and get this book. Again, I'm reading it for the third time. The Big Leap, Gay Hendricks, 
go out and get it this weekend. And uh, easy read. You won't be able to put it down. And um, I hope to see you next week. Thanks so much for coming by. While you're here, don't forget to like the Facebook page. And as always, cheers to your possibilities. And I'll see you next week.